there's literal works of art available for women to download entitled how to destroy a man now guys they say that every action has a equal and opposite reaction but in this case it is men that are fed up and are making rational decisions in the workplace what is it that we're talking about here today well the me too movement is clearly backfiring on women in professional environments and if you guys remember the me too movement kicked off towards the end of 2017 most notably with the harvey weinstein case who was inevitably found guilty now at the time the movement was praised because it gave strength to a lot of women to report s harassment that was happening in the workplace but one of the talking points specifically within the male sector that they focused in on is the strength of this movement hyperbolic or exaggerated in comparison to what is actually happening in the workplaces today and if there is an overcorrection well what would be the result of that overcorrection well first i want to give you guys exhibit a and this tweet got over two million views on twitter and it says I was talking to a female friend and she was telling me how lonely it is for her to be working with only men in her team because they all maintain a respectful distance from her as they don't want to come off as creeps, not realizing it is completely isolating. And when I read this tweet, the first thing that I think of is that there's modern men today that are making rational decisions because they're putting their purpose or how they make money over shitting where they eat but the definition of shitting where you eat is shifted over time because it used to mean flirting with said person of the opposite sex but in modern times today men are avoiding contact and conversations with women because of the overcorrection that i spoke about previously the irony being here is that the me too movement was put into place to help women but it turns out the degree that women utilized it to weaponize interactions with men in the workplace seems to be hurting them just as much five years removed since the beginning of the me too movement it's clear to a degree that me too is backfiring on women Women today in professional settings because men that might be executives or senior managers are now refusing to engage with female staff now some believe that this is just a knee-jerk reaction while others are saying that these men are making rational decisions because the risk of being fired should an interaction go awry or the risk of having s harassment as a stamp on your invisible resume or on your track record is not worth talking to or engaging with these women. So I decided to dig a little bit further and I found this article from Forbes. 60% of male managers are uncomfortable in job related activities with women. And here's why. A whopping 60% of male managers now say that they are uncomfortable participating in common job related activities with women such as mentoring, working alone together, or socializing together. And since men still run most of our corporations, the ability to network with men is critical for career success. But how can women expect to find a mentor when senior men won't even wanna meet with them alone? Personal anecdote time. So you guys know that before going full-time on YouTube, I work for two Fortune 20 companies. And because I did have a senior manager position, I would often get hit up by both men and women from a mentorship perspective and for the guys i would meet them somewhere in the building we might go out to lunch we might actually even leave the building to conduct our conversations but for women i kept the majority of these conversations unless it was referred by someone else that i had a good inclination onto their character but I would keep those conversations via phone. So for the men, it's no problem in conducting these conversations because it was never an inkling in my mind of things going astray. But for women, and especially a man being of a senior position, there's so much more risk in these conversations because you don't know how they may be taking some of the things that you might be saying. And the reason for that is I don't want to risk my purpose from a young lady that might be taking a joke or something like that out of context so as a senior member of the team i need to make a conscious decision of do i go out to lunch with her do i have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with her within a room where there's no cameras and no one else present and even the thought of that is just laborious in nature so 
how about I just not have it to begin with? There are even more staggering statistics from the Lean In survey. For example, senior men are 12 times more likely to be hesitant to meet with junior women than with junior men. Just like what I'm saying. They're nine times more likely to hesitate when it comes to business travel with the opposite sex and six times more likely to be hesitant when it comes to work dinners. And this is crazy looking at this right now because the story for most feminist women is that men are just monsters, just unable to control their sexual urges and appetites when the data says something completely different. So women are left out of one-on-one -on -one meetings, business trips, and work dinners and we wonder why there's a pay gap. I find it so interesting now after we've gotten over the surface level arguments of pay gap and now we can really get down into the meat and potatoes and say that, well, <laughs> a component of the wage gap is because of women. <laughs> Ironically, men say they're sticking with other men to avoid any Me Too issues, but segregating by gender, who you meet with, who you mentor, who you go on business travel with, and who you dine with is also illegal. Listen, it may be illegal, but men are making rational decisions. It's very clearly gender discrimination to favor men over women in these situations. So in addition to harming women's careers, this strategy also not the best route for men to avoid trouble from litigation. So essentially what this female writer is saying is that you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. What I find so interesting here is that men are concerned of S harassment litigation, which even when you are your most professional self is something that men need to be cognizant of. So what you're telling men is that no, you must go do that one-on-one -on -one meeting with a woman, but how do the rules then protect that man when that man on the point of allegation is considered guilty until proven innocent. So then the article goes on to explain why men are avoiding women. And you'll see some here. So first one, fear of sexual harassment issues. We're going over that one. Fear of misinterpretation of friendliness. This would actually make me think of this comic right here. Know the work rules, handsome Chad says. Looking good, Susan. Oh, you're so sweet, Chad. Appropriate. <laughs> the antithesis of Chad says, Looking good, Susan. Ha! Hello, human resources. <laughs> this is deemed as inappropriate. And this meme right here with both gentlemen saying the exact same thing. That dress is sexy on you. And the only difference in the response of flirting versus harassment is the uh, pleasability of the aesthetics. Number three, concern about what everyone else thinks. Yeah, because like even if the relationship is completely business, you now also have to worry about other people interpreting it in a weird way. Other people can try to report what they perceive, you know, office drama and shit like that to your office of ethics, try to get you hemmed up. Concern about a spouse or partner's feelings. What I find hilarious about this is that they call out Mike Pence, who says he won't dine alone with any other woman other than his wife, because he believes that it's improper. And the final one being that birds of a feather flock together, essentially saying that, you know, people connect to other people that are more similar to themselves. So men will more quickly connect with other men. Men and women who are sexually attracted to each other and they're working in confined environments for long periods of time and they essentially spend more time with the people they work with than they do with their lovers and their wives and their husbands. Mm -hmm. And it's weird, you know, mm -hmm. men and women interacting with each other in closed in boxes is weird. And that's right. what an office is. It's right. a closed in box, they're all together, and if they find each other attractive and they're interacting with each other socially, especially if there's any interaction that deviates outside of the work discussion, mm -hmm. they start well, you talking also about don't, different things. You also don't want them to find each other unattractive. Right. Like, like if you're taking someone out for dinner, on a business dinner, it's like, even if, if it's guys going out together, let's say, it's not like they're working to find each other unattractive. And I don't mean sexually. There's You want to manifest yourself as attractive. You want to enjoy each other's company. Yes, you do. Yes. And you want to be charismatic and you want to be yeah. witty and all of those things. And that shades, especially when you, when you add, assuming a heterosexual environment, you add a heterosexual component to that, the borders become fuzzy. I think Jordan makes a fantastic point right here that the idea of... Um, humans want to become attractive to other people, not in a sexual way, but you want your ideas to be attractive so that people will listen to you. They'll be a lot more 
likely to follow out with a task that you requested of them or so that you can make the sale. Shit, we talk about in sales all day about your image, your likeness. Also, it has to do with beauty as well. And there's actually even a term for it. It's referred to as the halo effect. The tendency for an impression created in one area to influence the opinion in another area. People who are more attractive automatically have an air of much more influence irrespective of the actual things that are coming out of their mouth. Now, if you take all of that together and you put in heterosexual beings together in a closed in box, one of which they're spending much more time within the workplace than they might have at home, well then issues may occur. But instead of those issues occurring, the men are just making a rational decision to not participate. And that rationalization, even though deemed as illegal, makes a lot more sense once you see that there's literal works of art available for women to download, entitled, How to Destroy a Man Now. A wave of sexual misconduct allegations about powerful men have exploded recently in the media. A bold social movement has begun with brave women coming forward and being applauded for speaking out and sharing their stories of abuse, discrimination, and harassment. As a result, men accused like Harvey Weinstein and dozens more have been removed from power and are suffering the consequences. In this book, How to Destroy a Man Now, Dr. Angela Confidential empowers women with a step-by-step -step guide for destroying a man's reputation and removing him from power. This is a real life handbook of how to dismantle a man. But see, this is how women that want to destroy a man, how they operate. And it's scary that there's handbooks detailing to them exactly how to do it. But how do they do it? Manipulation, innuendo, spreading lies, making things up, and false allegation. The handbook reveals and explains the fundamental dynamics between allegations, the media, and authority as they relate to male misconduct in today's society. It also unveils and deals with practical real-world methods for leveraging allegations, media, and authorities to dethrone a man from power. So which brings us back to the original tweet. What I've always told men to do on this channel is to never shit where you eat. It's never worth it, especially if you are in a position of power because it could be used later against you. But even outside of all of that, let's just take the component out of it of you wanting to hook up with someone at work. You need to be highly intelligent with how your interaction with a woman is taken, not only by that woman, but from other women in the office as well. Because remember, at the end of the day, you are guilty until proven innocent. And why would you want to risk your opportunity at your purpose because of the victimhood society that we live in today. Take Michael Irvin, for example, who was removed from the NFL network, who was removed from the ESPN network after a false allegation was levied against him. Again, men are just making rational decisions of whether or not you work in the four walls of an organization, or if you're a public figure, choose wisely how you deal with women in your space around you, or pay the consequences. Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Me, yoga tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. Sometimes we got to do these necessary videos from time to time. This actually made me think of uh, Keanu Reeves. If you ever see Keanu Reeves, he always takes photos and he's never really touching the young ladies. <laughs> what, what you thinking? What you thinking he's doing that for his own health or he's got some type of germophobia? No, Keanu knows what's up. You understand me? He's making a rational decision. Listen, at the end of the day, men are responding to the changes with women in society. We're just responding to it. We are responding to the modern woman. We are, we are responding to Me Too. We are responding to complaints. We, we are responding to all of these things. So you can't be mad at us for making a proactive stance in how we choose to deal with women in these situations. Until next time, YouTube. Peace. You don't wanna see me get vexed. Bars on your phone, tell a man you can't jet. The big girl, the ones who can't stretch. Breaking the neck when we in the car next. You don't wanna see me get vexed. Bars on your phone, tell a man you can't jet. The big girl, the ones who can't stretch. Breaking the neck when we in the car next. That bar, need
defibrillation ASAP Get boxed with a straight gap And reminded of my state they rap